Hello, welcome to today's lesson on half reactions. The question of the day, how do you know when a substance has been oxidized or reduced just by looking at the chemical equation? Sometimes we know the reaction, so we know what's happening. Like here, we have sodium and chlorine making sodium chloride. This is so classic. It's at this point like exhausting to even look at it. We know that in this case, uh, sodium is losing electrons, chlorine is gaining them. We know who's oxidized and who is reduced, but sometimes our chemical reaction is more intricate, more involved. Um, sometimes it's not so obvious. So in the tougher reactions, in order to know which is oxidized and which is reduced, it is best to write a half reaction, which shows what happens to just one of the species during a chemical reaction. So in this case, we have our big full chemical reaction and I have dissected it out into the half reactions. So to begin, we have two sodium atoms with a charge of zero because they're atoms and they are going to lose electrons. Losing electrons will make electrons a product. They come out, they go someplace else. Um, and that would leave our two sodium atoms now as two sodium ions, each with a plus one charge. So two sodium atoms becomes an ion or rather become ions by losing two electrons. They each lose one electron. Something I want you to notice here is that each of these, or rather this half reaction that we're looking at right now is balanced in terms of mass. We have two sodiums on each side and it is balanced in terms of charge. We have neutral on the reactant side. And over here, our two sodium ions will be neutralized in terms of charge by these two electrons. Positive two and negative two in total will give us zero. So it is balanced both, both in terms of mass and in terms of charge. That's one of the ways to check your half reaction to make sure that you did it correctly. Now over here, we have two chlorine atoms, each neutral with the same number of protons and electrons. Each one of them will gain one electron. So in total two, two electrons will be gained. And this will give us two chlorine ions. Now notice over here, we have um, two chlorines on each side of the reaction. So that works. Um, the reactant side in total carries a charge of minus two. This chlorine is neutral and these electrons carry negative two because there's two electrons. Then over here, we have two chlorines each with a minus one charge, giving us minus two. It's not that the reaction has to have a zero across the board, it just has to be balanced on each side. So the reactants here are negative two and the products are negative two. So the sentence for this is that two chlorine atoms gain two electrons to become ions. Because we're gaining electrons over here, this is our um, reduction reaction. And over here we have the oxidation reaction because we're losing two electrons. Something I want you to notice also is that the number of electrons lost is equal to the number of electrons gained. That is another way that the law of conservation can help us to check our work on half reactions. So the sodium chlorine reaction is super easy and we know what's happening even without learning redox. But when we have trickier reactions, here are your steps. You're first going to determine the oxidation states for all atoms in the reaction. If you need some help with oxidation states, I will refer you to the description box where I have linked the video on determining oxidation states. I use a pretty, I think, unique method, but it works really every time. So check that out. Um, so we're going to determine the oxidation state of all of the atoms in the reaction. And then we're going to look for changes. One element should have been oxidized where its charge is going up and the other element should have been reduced where its charge is going down. If that's not happening, something weird is going on. Now I will say not all reactions are redox reactions. Sometimes electrons don't move around all that much, but you can't have two species oxidized and two species reduced. You if, if there's one, there has to be the other. So if, if you have an oxidation, but not a reduction, um, it means that you're just gaining electrons out of thin air or losing electrons to thin air. If you have one, you have to have the other. We're going to write the equation for one of the elements with all of the charges that we've determined from the reaction. And then we're going to balance using electrons. Uh, sometimes you'll need to multiply using coefficients in order to get the correct number of electrons. Um, I don't think that that's going to be a 
primary thing for you because if you're working with a balanced equation from the beginning, you probably don't need to manipulate the coefficients. Um, if your uh, base equation is not balanced, this is probably something you'll have to do. So um, the 4a may or may not happen. Don't feel like you're doing something wrong if you don't actually have to do this. Let me walk you through an example. Here we have the single, uh, rather, yeah, the single replacement of chlorine and hydrobromic acid. And step one, we're going to determine the oxidation state of all of the atoms inside of this reaction. So the diatomic chlorine is in its natural state, so it will be a zero. And the same is true for the bromine over here. It's in its natural state. The HBr, H is going to be plus one because H is typically plus one unless it's bonded to a metal. And that would make bromine minus one. And the same is true over here for the chlorine. Now, step two, we need to look for changes, which I have color coded. The chlorine goes from zero to negative one, and the bromine goes from negative one to zero. Notice that one of these is going up and is being oxidized, and the other is going down and is being reduced. Step three, we write the equation for just the element, including the charges, um, in question. So here we have the chlorine. We have um, two chlorines. A lot of the time we would just put the two out front, but for this purpose, I just copied it straight from the reaction. We have two chlorines with a charge of zero becoming two chlorine ions with a charge of minus one. Over here, we have two bromine ions with a charge of minus one, which we've pulled from right here, becoming two bromine atoms with zero charge right there. Now we have to balance this using electrons. So before we were balanced only in terms of mass, right? We have two chlorines on each side and two bromines on each side. And now here we need to balance this in terms of charge. And in order to do that, we have to add in electrons. Now on this, we have um, a minus two over here between the two chlorines. So we would have to have a minus two on the other side, which means that the electrons are being added to the chlorine, which makes sense. In order for chlorine to become a chloride ion, you have to gain electrons. So this is going to be the reduction reaction where we gain electrons. Then over here, we have the bromine losing electrons going from ion to atom. Because this has a minus two over here, we would have to balance it with a minus two on the product side. So that's where we would put our two electrons. Notice that between the chlorine and the bromine reactions, we have lost and gained two electrons. The number of electrons lost must be equal to the number of electrons gained. Here is just that reminder that the number of electrons lost must be equal to the number of electrons gained in order for this to be a balanced chemical equation. Here is another example. I have found that this reaction is very common, so I thought it would be a good one to include. Uh, we have silver nitrate reacting with copper to form copper nitrate and silver. Uh, this is a tip from me to you. Hi. Um, I think that as long as your polyatomic ion stays intact for the entire reaction, which doesn't always happen, so that preface is very important, um, you can just use the charge of the entire poly. You don't have to find the charges of the individual atoms within it. Be on the lookout because sometimes... You'll have a few nitrates and maybe half of them break apart and the other half stay as nitrates. So it's important that you like really take a look at the reaction before moving forward with this. Um, but in this case, the nitrate stays together the whole time. So I know nitrate is a minus one because I know my polys. Um, but that's not always the case. So in this case, because the nitrate stays together, I'm just working with that minus one charge. Um, silver always likes to be plus one, so I know that as well. It's a transition metal that actually doesn't follow the properties of the other transition metals. It's pretty much always plus one. So um, that was helpful in this. Copper, it can be plus two. It also likes to be plus one. I find that plus two is more common, but in order to find that, because copper is a transition metal, I just uncrisscrossed. So this little two behind the nitrate is telling me that copper is choosing plus two. Um, the silver over here is plus one because it crisscrosses the one on the nitrate. Of course, it's imaginary. And then the silver over here and the copper over here are each unbonded. 
meaning that they're going to take on their neutral state and have an oxidation state of zero. So um, I've already done step two as well. So I've identified changes. Copper goes from zero to plus two. Silver goes from plus one to zero. Those are the two species I'm going to be looking at. I have pulled those substances and made the half reactions. So we have copper starting with zero and becoming plus two. And then we have two silvers starting at plus one, becoming two silvers with a charge of zero. So the next step would be to add in my electrons to now balance each of these half reactions in terms of charge. So right here, we have a copper with a zero becoming copper plus two. And in order, uh, I can't add anything to get this plus two to be a zero, right? I'm only allowed to add in electrons. That's what we're talking about here. So I have to take this plus two and knock it down to zero with two electrons. So it's clear here that copper is the one losing electrons because um, it's going from zero to plus two in order for metals to become ions, they lose electrons. So those two electrons are lost by one copper atom. And then it takes two silvers to gain the two electrons to make two silver atoms at zero. So if we look here, my two silvers are positive two in total. Two times this positive one gives me positive two. I can neutralize that charge with two electrons, giving me in total on my reactant side zero. And that will be equal in charge to the zero on the silver. So again, copper is losing two electrons, and then it takes two silver atoms to gain those two electrons. So it is important to realize that we have to have the same number of electrons on each side of this reaction. Um, when we add them together, we have two electrons as a product and two electrons as a reactant. They're the same two electrons, um, but those numbers must be equal to each other in order for us to have a correct half reaction. And that is all. Half reactions can get a lot more complex than this, but I think for the first year chemistry student, if you can do this, you can do everything that would be required of a first year chemistry student. So please make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next lesson. Leave any questions you have in the comment section below the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.